over here. No. I didn't even come out. Yeah, the guy felt super comfortable doing that, and he wasn't the only one. University of Wisconsin had this guy show up dressed like literally as Hitler. The Republican Party doesn't have much to say about the rise in anti-Semitism. That's probably because condemning all of that anti-Jewish rhetoric would really cut into their base. That certainly seems to be the case in Pennsylvania, where Republican candidate for governor Doug Mastriano has repeatedly refused to condemn anti-Semitism from his numerous anti-Jewish friends. And Mastriano's wife even scolded Jews recently for not loving Israel as much as she does. How do you respond to uh, complaints within the Jewish community regarding comments that you made about uh, your rival's Jewish school and the previous associations you had with Gab social network? Yeah, so. Well, I, I would like to make a comment Please. on that real quick. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to say as a family, we, we so much love Israel. In fact, I'm going to say we probably love Israel more than a lot of Jews do. I have to say that. Now, this isn't Mastriano's first dance with the anti-Semites. You may remember he made some unfortunate headlines after hiring a consultant, one Andrew Torba, better known as the proudly anti-Semitic Christian nationalist founder of the far-right social network, Gab. After months of pressure, Mastriano eventually put some distance between his campaign and Torba, but he has never condemned Torba's beliefs, including that Jews shouldn't have the right to vote. That should tell you everything you need to know about Doug Mastriano and a Republican party that has rallied behind him as a modern-day folk hero. Yuck. And if Doug Mastriano is proud to stand behind his anti-Semitic pals, other leading Republicans are doing the same thing by refusing to condemn the clear rise in anti-Jewish harassment consuming this country. After right-wingers broadcast the phrase, Kanye is right about the Jews, on buildings across Jacksonville, Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis said, well, nothing. You know, I don't think they could have picked a font that makes them look more like clowns if they had tried. Uh, but they projected that in several locations, including the football stadium, where Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis was in attendance. Do you think he came out the next morning to condemn that? This close to the midterms? Alienate voters? Are you crazy? Those who say the Republican Party isn't anti-Semitic are having an increasingly tough time proving that argument. This is, after all, the same party whose supporters set up a freedom fund for Timothy Hale Cusinelli, a January 6th insurrectionist famous for his Hitler mustache and love of all things Nazi. The leader of that Free the Nazi movement even got to speak at a Donald Trump rally in Pennsylvania. If the Republican Party isn't anti-Semitic, it's certainly the most comfortable home for anti-Semites to share their views without fear of being called out. And most Republicans are silent not because they necessarily agree, but because they know what happens to people who disagree with the far right. And what happens is becoming increasingly violent. Better, they reason, to just quietly consent to the march of madness. And things are going to get even worse. Elon Musk, a man who once compared Hitler favorably to Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, is now in charge of Twitter. He's fired the entire board of directors and appointed himself sole controlling director of the company. He's also firing anyone who disagrees with his plans. As Kanye might say, no one man should have all that power. But as long as we're talking about Elon's Twitter, it has seen a 500% increase in posting of the N slur since he took over. And like this morning I made a post and the very first response was this chuckle with his little list of uh, Jewish people that work in media. With Musk's new plan to sell verified blue checks to anyone willing to pay $240 a year, Twitter is facing a new era where far-right neo-Nazis can carry the same perceived legitimacy as the New York Times, and where the sole leader of Twitter considers their targeted attacks on Jews to be just another form of fun political speech. And just wait until Musk invites his friends Kanye and Donald Trump back. The right has embraced the darkest elements of our culture because they are willing to do anything to win. And when they do, they've said they plan to fix America's electoral system. And boy, when they say fix, do they ever mean it. They'll fix it so they don't ever have to worry about the outrage of actual voters again. The lunatics are about to run the asylum, and time is running out to stop them. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and consider subscribing. 
and leave a comment below so you can let me know what I should cover next.